facial symmetry is discussed at the start of the treatment with the patient. The alignment of the occlusal plane to the bipupillary plane and the midline. Patient and dentist can jointly select the target shade using Coltine Whale Dense Shade Guide. A shade matching the brightness of the whites of the eyes will usually be found to be a close match. An acrylic stick aligned to the occlusion with dental putty simplifies the subsequent alignment of the occlusal plane to the facial symmetry. The shape and size of the componeers to be placed can be determined by using the contour guide. The shapes match the corresponding componeer perfectly. The componeers are individually packaged. The sheet on the reverse side serves for patient documentation. The componeer is removed with a pair of tweezers. Before the preparation, the dentine and enamel shade are determined cervically and incisally, respectively, on the teeth using the shade guide. The interplay between dentine and enamel can be determined by placing the shade guides on top of each other. Using the rubber dam in the traditional manner, the hole positions are marked using a template. Then the rubber dam is stretched over the frame and punched. The dental arch can also be cut out to give a better gingival overview. The prepared rubber dam is placed over the dental arch and fixated distally by clamps. The facial tab is then attached to the gingiva. The rubber dam is also fixed on the palatal side. As can be seen, the operating site is dry and clearly visible. The teeth are cleaned with toothpaste and polished with a rubber cap polishing tool to ensure their optimum preparation. This is followed, if necessary, by a reduction of the surface of the teeth, removing as little dental hard tissue as possible. A defined preparation margin, as well as shortening of the incisal edges, is not necessary. The teeth are checked for caries and old fillings. Caries in the dentine is removed in the conventional way, as are demineralized and discolored parts of the enamel. Special attention should be given to cervical parts of the enamel. The caries has been removed and all facial parts of the enamel have been treated. The enamel is also treated interdentally to improve conditioning. Shape and size are rechecked after preparation before the componeer is removed from its packaging. Shapes are corrected if necessary by using a low RPM disc operated in a dry oral environment. The componeer holder provides a perfect hold for this procedure. Corrections of shape for cervical contour and incisal length can now be checked directly on the tooth. The corrected companiers can also be placed on the teeth using a small portion of composite. This makes it possible to check the future occlusal plane. The teeth are cleaned after removal of the companiers and preferably sandblasted to ensure subsequent optimum conditioning. A retraction cord can optionally be placed for improved cervical control. The etching gel is applied to the teeth and distributed to all surfaces by using a brush. 
After 30 seconds, the gel is thoroughly sprayed off for 30 seconds and air dried. One coat bond is distributed evenly to all teeth and massaged in. The reaction time is 20 seconds. The bond is then blown to a thin layer and excess bond is aspirated. Separators are now placed to ensure clear tooth access. Each tooth is pre-cured for 10 seconds. The selected looting composite is applied directly to the tooth and evenly distributed. At the same time, the companies are prepared by the nurse. The companier holder is suitable for carrying out pre-treatment. If the companiers have been contaminated, they are cleaned for a short period with phosphoric acid. One coat bond is applied to the inner surface and the margins, blown to a thin layer and not pre-cured. The looting composite is also applied to the companier in order to avoid air inclusions. Exact marginal adaptation is important. The first companier is placed on the tooth using a pair of tweezers. The placer with its silicon attachment enables an even pressure to be applied which does not vary in direction. The excesses are removed by cutting with the spatula specially designed for the purpose and the composite is adapted exactly to the marginal areas. When placing several companiers, it is recommended that the first companier should not be light cured. The second companier is placed in the same way as the first and aligned to the first. The position of the companiers is checked or corrected using the occlusion index that has been prepared. With the companiers in the correct position, the companiers are light cured, firstly palatally and then buccally, each for 30 seconds. Further companiers follow in the same fashion. The marginal areas can be sealed with a flowable composite to ensure marginal integrity. The tooth axes and tooth lengths are checked before finishing. Large excesses are removed palately with a pear-shaped coarse diamond burr and the surface continuity checked by a probe. Cervical areas, especially towards the interdental areas, are treated with a thin 40 micrometer flame-shaped diamond burr. 40 micrometer proxoshape files are used to achieve optimum smoothing cervically. Fine matching as regards axes and lengths begins after the removal of the excess. The places to be corrected are marked with a pencil. Occlusion is checked before polishing and occlusal contouring is carried out if necessary. Cervical polishing is carried out with 8 micrometer ultrafine diamond burrs. The proxoshape files are recommended for smooth transitions. The 8 micrometer flame-shaped diamond burr is suitable for contoured cervical regions of the tooth. Interdental contouring is carried out using diamond-coated strips, followed by polishing with ever finer foil strips. Dental floss is used to ensure successful interdental polishing. Lengths and contours are corrected with slow RPM coarse discs after polishing the marginal areas. Thin discs are suitable for the inter-incisal angle. The marginal ridges are contoured by bell-shaped pre-polishers and high-gloss polishers with air cooling. Tapered polishers are used to accentuate mamelons or to smooth out structures. 
silicon carbide coated high RPM brushes operating in a dry environment with air cooling are the best means of achieving an optimum high gloss. The application of fluoride prevents the deposition of colors in freshly treated areas of enamel. Patient and dentist jointly assess the appearance of the restoration at the end of the treatment and a follow-up appointment is agreed where extensive restorations are being carried out. The companies integrate harmoniously as regards luster and sheen with their surroundings, giving the patient an attractive smile.